be quite intimidating to new players and hopefully this video will get you up to scratch and ready for when Alpha 7 comes out and you won't feel quite so lost and overwhelmed when you've got your boots on the battleground. Now I won't be able to cover every aspect of squad in this video but it should help the newer players including some of the founders and backers who weren't involved in the actual closed beta testing now vehicles and new functions have been brought in. So if there's anything that I haven't covered in this video and you'd like to know please leave them in the box below and I'll see if I can help you out in any way I can. In the meantime let's jump straight in with this beginner's guide to squad from me, Para Players. The video is going to be broken up into different sections which you can see on screen now so if there's something that specifically you want to know about please jump ahead. I won't be telling you about what is squad, that's quite obvious, this is really is a quick guide so let's jump in with the first section. So here we are, we've loaded up our first server, we're on the map and we're ready to go. What's the first thing we do? We can't seem to get anywhere so what we're going to do is we're going to press the enter key. That's going to show us a description of the map and overview. And over on the left here, we can see there are already this amount of players on, and they have already set up two squads. Now, each squad has a maximum of nine players. So there's seven of nine in this one and seven of nine in the Roughnecks. So what we're going to do is we can come up here and actually create our own squad. Now, we don't want to do that because the game is all about squad. So we're going to join one of these by literally clicking Join. Now this is going to bring us a list here of players that have already in this squad. We're in squad one and these are the players as you can see and it also shows their roles on the left. Here we are down at the bottom. Squad royalty. Now this shows you all the roles and you're probably going to be thinking, right well I don't want to play as a rifleman, I want these good stuff down here, why can't I have it? These roles actually don't open up until there are more players in your squad. So because we've got basically a full squad, these have opened up. As you can see, there's only three slots available out of all the fire support roles. We can select this one as one of two, zero of two here, and rifleman. And I really would suggest as a new player, you stick with the rifleman class. You're really going to have a better time with this before you get into the intricacies of some of these weapons and the tactics that goes with it. I'm sure you're all going to ignore that advice, but for now, let's just jump in as a rifleman. I'm using the mouse wheel, and you can drag this map around. And we're going to be clicking on this little yellow dot here. This is the main base. This is where you will spawn when you first come into the game, if it is the start of a new round. And in the following section, we shall be having a look at the map and the icons. It can be a little bit confusing, but it's not that difficult once you get a little bit used to it. So this is the map screen, we can either press the enter key or we can press the M key. Currently on screen I've shown you the M key. We can zoom in on this map with the N key, that will zoom the map in and out in four different stages. And as you can see that is us on the battlefield, it will always show us and it also shows our arc of view as well. And we can scroll through the N key to get a view distance that's comfortable for you. Now in order to show you my mouse I'm going to press the return key. So as I mentioned this is us on the battlefield and there are many many icons on here. So let's start at the beginning. Everything green on this map is our squad and we're in squad 2. So anytime you see a green icon on here that's a friendly. This yellow dot is the main base. If we ever die or we are killed we can always always spawn back at this just by double clicking it and that will bring us back to the main base. These icons here are quite new, these are repair areas for the logistics and the transport trucks and this is where they rearm and there's also an ability for you to change your class and rearm which I shall show you in a second coming up. So purple shield, this is a defence marker, this means our team and our squad are to defend this area. And the area can be quite large around here, it could be a building, it could be a bridge, it could be a part of a river. We have to defend this for a certain amount of time until the rest of our team has attacked the next marker. Then this will become redundant, the enemy cannot capture it, and so forth and so forth we move on. Now these icons here are the squad leaders. This blue one here, it's difficult for me to select because one of my team underneath, is squad leader number four. And as we look down here, this is squad leader number one and his squad down there. So as I mentioned, all our icons are green, so our squad leader is up at the top there's our medic. Now this icon that looks like a castle is an FOB, Forward Operating Base. 
the squad leader puts this down on the map and it means the entire team not just our squad the entire team can spawn on this area when the squad leader places this down there is a slight cooldown period before the whole team can use it which is called reinforcing and you'll see this at the top left hand side of your screen which i'll show you now and that needs to get to zero before any of our team can actually spawn there now these are vulnerable the enemy if there's more enemies in the area than us we cannot spawn on this and it will go red they can also attack it with shovels and destroy it so as we come further down here let's have a look at some of the other icons this is an icon that our squad leader has placed in the world it usually means attack attack this area with the sword he-man you are not what else have we got in here this yellow mark here means attack so the purple shield is defense the yellow marker down means attack same as defense really you need to get your team and your squads into this area and eventually you'll see up at the top we start to take it from the enemy neutralize it and take it this is a cat and mouse game if they've got more in the area than you have you will not be able to capture it and vice versa so that is what this yellow down marker means these are obviously enemy vehicles that have been spotted by the squad leader and he's placed an icon on here so he's saying that there is possibly a saw gunner down there and over there there's a tank this icon means the squad leader has put down an ammo box so if you need some more ammo or you want to change class and there is one available you can come and change your class by running up to the ammo box and pressing F and I shall show you a sample of that on screen right now this icon here this little flag is a rally point now squad leader one and all his squad are the only people that can use this rally point as you can see eight spawns left these have a limited number so if you die you can click on this icon and you can spawn back in but there is a time limit on all these things the closer you are to the center of the battle the longer you will have to wait so what's the difference between a fob and a rally a fob means the entire team can use that point a rally point means only your squad can use that point so here we are in the key section now if you've played the majority of first person shooters out there you're going to be quite well at home we have the traditional a w a s and d keys to move around and we have the left shift to sprint and you'll notice down at the bottom right hand corner there is a bar this is your stamina bar and if i jump up and down you'll see there's actually a new bar for climbing and jumping and when that runs out you can't hold your breath and your shots will be all over the place so it really is a matter of managing your stamina and recoil left control is for crouch up and down and you can get these to stay crouched or you can tab it so they automatically changes z key is to lay on the ground and of course we can also sprint crouched and crawl forward and this again will affect your stamina q and e keys are for creeping and looking around corners and you can also bind those to stay on and toggle them left alt key is a key that not a lot of people use no matter which stance you're in it actually makes you crawl or walk this makes your footsteps quiet which is really quite useful if you're in tunnels and buildings or even running through water the enemy won't actually hear you so remember that alt key it is quite handy right mouse button is to zoom in and obviously the left mouse button is to fire and you can click the number one key or click down on your mouse scroll wheel to go from single fire to automatic automatic always for clearing buildings and up close and single fire is going to be your mainstay on these weapons you actually have to manage your recoil on these weapons it's not like a lot of other games where you just point and shoot you physically have to aim and deal with the recoil you may find this quite difficult at first but believe me you will get used to it number two key is usually your sidearm not every class has a sidearm so be aware of this and the same things again with aiming and aiming down the sight not every class has a grenade but here we have if you click your right mouse button this will throw it as a normal grenade there is no crosshairs so you're gonna have to learn in game and judge this if you click your right mouse button this will use underhand which is great for throwing in doorways or just lobbing it gently over a compound wall as with all things in this game anything that explodes or goes boom has a large splash damage area and shrapnel so be aware of this i'm currently in an injured state 
So I'm going to bring up my bandage with number 5 or 6 key, depending on your role. And we're going to click the right mouse button. Now this is important. The right mouse button heals myself. It will stop me bleeding out. I still need to find a medic in order to get back to 100% health. If one of my fellow team was injured and bleeding and there was no medics around and they had no bandages left, I run up to them and I click my left mouse button. Now the underarm and overarm is the same again for the smoke grenades. And here I am, I'm the squad leader, so I actually get different ones. And you simply click the same smoke button in order for that grenade to come out for the colour. And that's the same for the 203 gunner as well. Now the smoke grenades, they will fire off like this and eventually the smoke will start to come out. And it's usually from the head of the grenade, be aware of this. If you're using the Russians, their smoke grenades come out from both ends. And place weapons throughout the game, it's just a matter of going up to them and pressing the F key. And this is how you get in, and this is how you leave them. In order to reload them, it's the usual thing of pressing the R key. And of course, we have the right mouse button, which will give you some zoom. Your ammo count is shown in the bottom right hand corner in a dial. This represents how many mags you actually have for your particular weapon. If the colour is green, it means that this particular magazine is full, and as you can see, it changes colour. It also represents how many magazines you've got left before you need to go and get some more ammo. Now the A represents automatic, and S is single fire, which we can change with the number one key. Now the key to this is single fire all the time, automatic clearing buildings up close. You can also press the left shift key while locking down your weapon, and this is equivalent of holding your breath. This doesn't stay on forever, it usually comes out of your stamina, so be aware of that. Close shots, single, controlled, you get much better accuracy, as you will in most other games, as you really have to aim and shoot properly in squad. In this video, I'm not going to be going into an in-depth guide on the use of vehicles, more a general overview of how we actually get in and some of the functions of these vehicles. Here we're actually looking at a supply truck or a logi truck or a Ural, you may hear it, but most people call them logi trucks. So we're in with the F key and we can move around with our mouse to give us a little bit of a view of where we're actually going. And you will need to bind the engine start key. And that's the same key which actually turns the engine off. We can change seats by pressing the F keys and different vehicles have a different amount of infantry. In this one, it is two people in the front and one on the back. The transport truck has up to 13 people and various other amounts of people will be in the different vehicles. I'll leave you to work those out. Basically, the technicals have three, the Humvees have five, etc, etc. But it's the same keys in order to be able to move them. Now, these vehicles are valuable. You do not want to damage or lose these vehicles in combat. These vehicles are worth, on average, 38 tickets each. Now, that's a huge amount of tickets, and we'll get into the complexity of ticket-based games and fighting probably in another video, as this is a beginner's video. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much, but basically, look after these vehicles. A logistics truck helps to supply, as we mentioned earlier in the video, it helps to supply your emplaced weapons with more ammo. It helps to supply the forward operating bases or the fobs with more building materials for your squad leader in order to be able to put down sandbags, etc, etc. So they really are valuable. Now, all the vehicles basically handle the same F key to get in to change your keys and the same engine key, except that the technicals obviously have a weapon on the back, as does the Humvee. Uh, to reload, fire, bang, 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 run out of ammo, find a logistics truck or come back to the main base and repair there. So here we are in the BTR and just a little side note here. We're actually looking at the interior of the exterior model, which means all the interiors are going to be redone. That's a little tip for you I spoke from the devs. Now the BTR, we can change as usual our seats with the F keys at the driver. Can press the number one or number two to bring the hatch down. Now this hasn't got a huge amount of gameplay difference at the minute because specific vehicle damage isn't brought in, but it will be in the future. Now the 50 cal gunner on top also has a certain amount of ammo, which you can see down in the bottom right hand corner, which we have already discussed. So when that runs out, you need to find a logi truck or go back to the main base for resupply. This actually takes a while and you can overheat the gun. So short bursts is the best way to use this vehicle. 
Now this vehicle also has a zoom, which is the same key, number two, one and two, always for all these functions. As you can see, we get a fantastic view here of the battlefield for ripping infantry to pieces. In order to resupply the front lines, with using our logistics truck, we've gone back to base, we've reloaded, and here we are, we're heading off towards the FOB to give it supplies. Now, as we get towards an emplaced weapon, or an FOB, as you can see, which is the little blue castle down there, you'll see an icon appear at the top left-hand side of the screen. This is going to be divided into different sections, as you can see up there. So this is currently is full already. We don't need to resupply this, but I'll show you anyway. So 1,000 ammo means we can resupply this back to 1,000 ammo, which is going to be used by the emplaced weapons. The hammer symbol is building materials, which the squad leader uses to put down barbed wire, bunkers, in place weapons. This all comes out of his tally up at the top left. The fact it says active, we know from the previous sections of this video that the squad leader's put down an FOB and the timer has run down, so now people on his side can use this to spawn in to the battle. I hope you've enjoyed this beginner's guide. It really is just scratching the surface of what's involved in this game. And I will be doing further videos on being a squad leader and the different classes and how you can use them to best effective use for your squad and the team over my experience from being in this game and involved with the devs and the game and the community since day one. It really is a lot to learn and even having been in from day one there are still things I'm learning and trying and experiencing and the only way you're going to get there is, well I would say to watch my videos but is to get in there and get yourself with a good squad leader. There are many 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 good squad leaders and there are so many great people in this community all you have to do is get on the forums, get in game and ask them advice. Why does this do this? How do you do this? What's this for? It's how we all learned. We all taught each other. And the fact that vehicles are in now, it's a whole learning curve for everybody. So don't feel if you come into this game, it's too complicated. I don't understand it. And if I can give you one tip before I sign off, if you're a new player, stick with your squad. Do not lone wolf. Your squad will get sick of it, you will get kicked, and you just will not get enough out of this game. Squad by name, squad by nature. Getting into a firefight with a group is amazing. You may be running or driving and you get some downtime, but it's those moments of absolute carnage and destruction that really make this game beyond any other game I've ever played. Team-based, multiplayer shooter. And it's only going to get better and better and better. The devs are constantly updating it and listening to the community. So get in, get involved, and I shall see you on the battlefield. I've been Paraplayers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any suggestions or anything else you would like to know, more videos coming from me and the community, I'm sure. Thanks for watching. This has been Squad Version 7 Beginners Guide. I can't get my words out now. I shall see you in a new video real soon. Thanks a lot. Not working. Oh, okay.